Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Today, we have another off-season signing for you. You are Locked On Blue Jays, your daily Toronto Blue Jays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jays. Thank you for making Locked On Blue Jays your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Well, another signing. I mean, what can we say? I, I'm not going to overhype this for you. Um, Eduardo Escobar. I'm going to give you a rundown on his stats first. And then we can really get into it because I'm not sure how any of you are going to feel about this. Last year, this one hurts. Minus 1.1 war. Six home runs, 226 batting average, 31 RBI, 309 plate appearances in 99 games played. What are we doing? Do we need another infielder? Like, what what do we do? Like what are we doing? Do you have an answer for me, Carter? Like I don't know. I'm I'm I realistically want an answer here. Yeah, this was a surprising move to uh, see late on Thursday night. Um, this just kind of adds to the effect. I think that uh, the Blue Jays don't know who's going to play at third base or second base. Those were Eduardo's two primary positions last season, and that kind of throws him into an interesting conversation. He didn't have a great year last year, like you were saying only hitting 226, 65 hits, uh, an OPS of 613. But he is a career 253 hit. If there is any upside to this signing, I guess there is that. He's 35 years old, a switch hitter, so I guess it gives us another left-handed bat. Um, yes, it, it's interesting because there is literally like six different people that could be playing third base and second base. Like we have Santiago Espinal, IKF, David Schneider, Kevin Biggio, Justin Turner, now we have Eduardo, Eduardo Escobar, and then we have the option of Aurelis Martinez and Addison Barger maybe having a good spring training and coming up and stealing one of those spots. So this is kind of like an old-fashioned tryout, in my opinion. Uh, they're going to see who's, uh, like, they're going to ride their hot hand and their hot bat. Whoever's hitting well at the plate, they're probably going to punch in there most of the time. So this is a uh, position that can be won or lost in spring training. I'm, I'm just about over it, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm, I'm not thrilled about this move. I don't think it matters. This is just adding another guy to our roster, personally. Like that's that's what I think. I don't I don't understand this move. It's fine. You know what? Maybe he goes out and he's he's the best hitter of all time. And maybe I don't know, right? But in my opinion, this is just not not doing it for me. And when we talked about signing one more guy and you know, who's it gonna be? Was this on anybody's bingo card? Which which we talked about. We said it's probably going to be something that we don't see coming. This is left field for me. Like this isn't even in the, in the area. I I don't care about this move at all. I think this is another Toronto Blue Jays special where another one we weren't really expecting. Like I said, nobody really had on their bingo card. Obviously when we traded for Dalton Barshall last year, that was a trade that came out of left field. Nobody, nobody was expecting that whatsoever. But I think a reason that they could have added this guy, obviously it's always good to have depth. A veteran, he's 35, was an all-star in 2021, has had a few uh, different playoff uh, appearances throughout his career. But with this guy's splits, we'll go go into the uh, hitting from the left side of the plate. So he had 192 appearances with 33 hits, 13 RBIs. He hit 185, struck out 26.6% of the time, and then 505 OPS. When he was hitting from the right side of the plate, obviously, he's going to have left-handed pitching, not happening as often. So 116 plate appearances, 31 hits, 16 RBIs. He had 284, the 23.3 strikeout rate, and an OPS of six, or sorry, 769. So obviously a lot better numbers there. Just another guy that they could throw in against left-handed pitching uh, and can help this offense maybe in uh, some times of struggle. For me, it's – sorry, I, I, should have, I should have worded that better. It's not that this move doesn't make any sense at all. Just with the signings and the players we have now, personally, this just doesn't 
like I don't know where we're putting these guys. Like, w- like what? We're gonna swap swap people out every two games to to get everybody in this lineup? Like I don't know. Like do you play him at two? But then we got Biggio. Do you play him at three? Oh wait, we got IKF. We also could throw SB in there. We could throw Biggio here. We could throw IKF here. We could throw David Schneider here. Oh, now we got Eduardo Escobar that we could throw in here. Like what are we doing? Give guy give a guy the position. And if it's not working out, then you make a trade for something if you're making a playoff push. But but yeah, us the, signing nine different guys to play these positions makes zero sense to me. The only thing that kind of makes sense in my head is that, like I said, they're going to have a free tryout in spring training for third base and second base. They'll probably have three to four out of those eight guys that they're going to rotate in. And then the other guys, they're either going to look to option to AAA or they're just going to try to trade away. I mean, this infield is very... Um, compact to say the least there's a lot of competition there there's a ton of guys that aren't there's just not enough playing time to go around so i could see maybe a trade happening for one of these uh, middle infielders somewhere along the road here so i'm, I'm gonna ask you this <clears throat> excuse me if w- this trade happens blah 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 or this move happens blah 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 comes down the line and, and you find out that your best players will be second base Kevin biggio third base ikf then you either have to move Davis Schneider, probably not. You'd probably just keep him around as a as a bat. And then you're going to try to move Eduardo Escobar. How how is that going to happen? So you're going to have to option him, and it's a complete waste of a move. I think so. The, in, in my head, that's great that we're doing a tryout, whatever. But if he's not going to be live up to what we're thinking, which would be, I would assume a more full-time role at third or second. And if that doesn't happen, this move makes, this move is nothing. So in my head, yes, he goes out and he plays unbelievable. And then you can maybe move either IKF, Espinal, Cav, you're not going to move Cav Vigio, but IKF or Espinal. And that's not saying like, I, I think, I think Espinal is going to out hit this guy, to be honest with you. So, I don't know. And maybe this is just me getting lost in the, in the math and how this is all going to work. But, and, and obviously Ross Atkins probably has a plan for what's going on. Fingers crossed. I hope he has a plan because I, I don't see it. I don't see this plan. I don't see what, what good this is doing. Um, if you're going to go out and make one more signing, why not get an outfielder? Somebody that's, you know, you could use as like a, a fourth outfielder instead of Nathan Lucas, but now what? So, we can slot in Davis Schneider once a blue moon, maybe Cabin Biggio a little bit, but why not? Why not instead of making this move, go and find an outfielder? I don't know. Are you sort of with me, or do you do you see more potential with this move? Yeah, I think this means that Davis Schneider is going to be playing a lot of left field this season. Obviously, they have not addressed that outfield position, and they have talked about platooning Davis Schneider out there. Cabin Biggio does have a lot of experience in right field, but that was kind of George Springer's position. So I think it's more realistic that we see David Schneider out in left field. Uh, Kevin Kiermaier isn't going to be able to play every day. George Springer, probably the same thing. Dalton Varsho is very durable and very good defensively. So he's going to be in there a lot of the time. And one of the, as one of the best defenders in the league, that's uh, something that we can't really complain about. But yeah, yeah with, uh, with moving some of these guys, like IKF doesn't really carry a lot of value for me. Escobar's on a, it's, uh, we're assuming it's going to be a one-year deal. The contract, yeah. again, assuming is going to be fairly low, probably somewhere in that like five to seven million dollar range. But yeah, with the signing of IKF, it feels like another one of those almost, just kind of the opposite, more of a, you could say reliable, I guess, hitter. Even that's a little bit of a stretch and just a below average defender. So this guy is going to be out of games uh, late in games, but maybe it's a pitch pinch hitting role as well. Maybe you can see this guy coming off the bench and specific spots when they have uh, lefties coming out of the bullpen. That's another option. But if you're looking to trade the team, I think the only ones that really carry any value are, unfortunately, Kevin Biggio and David Schneider. Justin Turner's a guy you're not going to trade, obviously, on a one-year deal. Didn't uh, sign him on a one-year deal just to trade him away. Martinez, Aurelis Martinez is one of your best prospects. Tough guy to get rid of. So there's going to have to be another piece, I think, involved if they were ever going to think of trading one of these uh, infielders. Yeah, and then that's what's upsetting, right? Because we we don't – I don't know. I, I'm a little bit just blown away, and I don't know how to feel because I don't know what the plan is. And 
I, I feel like probably, and, and they're not going to tell us what the plan is. They're not going to, they're not going to come out and say, this is what we are doing until opening day. And we get to see what's going on. But in my mind, an outfielder would have been the better move here. I don't understand this. And, and let us know in the comments, like, do you guys realistically think that this is a good idea or like, I, no, I'm not necessarily saying that this is the worst thing on planet earth either. Like whatever, it's an extra guy. But in the same respect, this is nowhere near the best possible move that they could have made here. Yeah, it sounds like I'm a little bit more optimistic about this than uh, you are here. Um, I'm, I'm, just, another... I'm just more so thinking, like, again, it's not that I'm not, like, he could be fine. But but this, it just, like, logistically in my head makes doesn't make a whole lot of sense when there are outfielders on the board still in play. Yeah, other than, in my opinion, the Dalton Varsho trade, which it is early to say about that now, but obviously right now it's looking like we probably lost that trade. And again, Dalton Varsho could have a great year, hit 30 home runs, and maybe we think differently uh, at the end of the season. But for Ross Atkins and his history of signing free agents, making trade, Matt Chapman for pretty much nothing. We got Whit Merrifield for pretty much nothing. I think it was Jordan Groshans, who's with the Yankees now, having pretty much a non-existent career in the MLB. Uh, Kevin Kiermeyer obviously a great signing last season. Brandon Belt, one of the best hitters on the team last season. It's a pretty good track record. I think uh, we have to kind of ride with Ross on this one. And just we got to have a little bit more faith in him. The Blue Jays have been a, easily a playoff team the last few seasons. Obviously, uh, 2021, a little bit of a heartbreak there. But they've been in contention a lot of this time. And one thing with Escobar is that his playoff stats are really good as well. He was in there in the playoffs in 2017, 2021, and 2022. The 348 uh, batting average and 23 plate appearances, eight hits, one homer. So, I mean, if this guy can be a little bit more consistent in the playoffs and be just more comfortable out there, because this team has been seen to struggle in the playoffs in the big moments, especially last season. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you. I, I think this could be, it, it could be good. Honestly, I, I feel like this is a little bit of a coin toss here of how this is going to end up playing out. Um, and, and maybe that's what they were going for. They're like, ah, we have a spot open. Let's give this guy a deal. If he works out great, if he doesn't, whatever. And if that's your thinking going into it, then, then okay, whatever. It is what it is. But if their thinking is that we're going to utilize this so we can trade some of our guys, I don't know if this is going to pan out how they think it's going to pan out. So, I mean, we'll see how it gets going at the start of the season. Um, but we do want to get into, we've been sort of like, we've been wanting to do this for a while, like going over sort of how this offseason went and comparable guys to Justin Turner and how that move all sort of went down and, and comparing his stats to some of the other guys that we talked about that we saw online that were uh, talked about for his role that he's providing this season. So we'll get into all that. We're going to do a sort of like, I think we each picked three guys. So we'll get into all that right away. Backblaze makes backing up and ad accessing your data astonishingly easy. Backblaze offers you unlimited cloud backup files for Macs, PCs, and businesses for just under $99 a year. You can easily protect business data through a centrally managed admin, and it protects all this data in your machines automatically. Backblaze offers multiple restore options, including rapid recovery in the event of data loss or ransomware. Access your backup data from anywhere in the world using our web app, our iOS, or Android apps. Uh, with one time I broke my phone when I was younger, I just kind of was chucking it all over the living room, especially if I was not doing great in video games. So if I would have had Backblaze there, it would have been a lot easier to restore all my contacts, get all my music back, um, just a bunch of different things that would have saved me. Grass would have got my pictures back. Just a whole lot more efficient process if I would have had Backblaze in my back corner. So just visit backblaze.com slash locked on MLB to receive a fully featured no risk free trial. That's backblaze.com slash locked on MLB to start protecting yourself from the potential bad times. I think that's the first time we've had that ad and that went pretty solid. I think Carter. Um, yeah. I'm surprised I uh, didn't fumble through it too, too much. So uh, yeah, it's uh, always nice to have new ads and new sponsors for these videos. So I'm going to ask you, did you, did you take two or three guys in this one? And we were comparing. I, I do have three here. You do have three. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, what we're going to do then is I'll start with you. We each took three different guys who, and, and sort of looked at their stats, how they're comparable to Justin Turner and sort, sort of come out at the end of this, seeing if we as the blue Jays, sorry, made the right move looking just specifically at stats here. So 
Carter, who's the first guy that you wanted to compare Justin Turner to? Um, the first guy I have is a guy that some fans were surprised that we didn't even seem like it, we reached out to sign this guy. And that was Brandon Belt, uh, a guy that at the start of the year looked horrible, uh, showed up late in spring training. First three weeks, I think he was hitting like 0.065 or something ridiculous like that, like 21 strikeouts and about 30 plate appearances. Looked terrible. We're like, why did we even sign this guy? It's such a waste of money. Then slowly started coming around as he started playing throughout the season. We finished with 103 games played, 86 hits, 43 RBIs, with a 254 batting percentage, 141 strikeouts, and 859 OPS, and 19 home runs. So a lot of Blue Jays players were around this 19 home run, 20, 21 home run mark, uh, but they obviously had around 140, 150 games played. So Brandon Belt and only two thirds of that uh, looked pretty good most of the season. Uh, but one thing with Brandon Belt is I always felt like he worked the count to three and two like every single time he'd get down like oh two early and then he'd just work it to full count obviously it's always good when you can make the pitcher throw a lot of pitches the only downside to that is either with the three two counts either you walk or you strike out so we had a lot of pretty much both of those uh strike out struck out quite a bit as well uh one thing comparing justin turner to brandon belt i think with brandon belt they were hoping to get more of a leadership role out of him but with Brandon Belt, uh, if you saw some of his interviews uh, throughout the season, he's a pretty unserious guy. Uh, one time he made a joke to the guys. I think he was signed. It was either $11 million or $13 million last year. I can't remember. I'm mixing those numbers up in my head. But uh, he's like, oh, I'm pretty much playing for this team for free. And the guys are like, man, I'd love to play for $11 million. Are you kidding me? Like, what the heck? But uh, just, yeah, totally unserious. And that is one good thing about Justin Turner is that leadership role. We've heard about it so many times. So many different players have talked about it in interviews. Uh, he's done it before. He's 39, older guy, a veteran in the league. And I think he can show a lot of these guys uh, how to become a clutch per performer when it comes to the playoffs. Yeah, so when we talk about Brandon Belt, obviously you hit the nail on the head there because I think Brandon Belt had decent stats last year, but at the end of the day, what that role needs to be is a leadership role. And I, and I liked Brandon Belt quite a bit. Like I, I thought he was a decent fit for this ball club. Um, just to go over Justin Turner's stats. So we have them for the next couple here. So we're not going to keep repeating Justin Turner's stats. Uh, you get a 2.1 war, 146 games played, uh, 154 hits, 23 home runs, 96 RBI. His batting average was a 276. He had, he had a slugging percentage of 455 and an OPS of 800. So just getting into that, I, I, I obviously I think, um, Justin Turner had slightly better stats, but as, as an overall, Brennan, Brennan Belt wasn't, wasn't bad in, in that role. I just, I think they wanted a little bit more, like you said, leadership from him. And I think that's something that Justin Turner will be able to provide a little bit more than Brandon Belt did. No, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Brandon Belt, uh, a little bit more of an unserious guy, obviously did produce. So if you're getting the produ production, I don't think you can complain too much, but Justin Turner, maybe we do need, well, we've been saying it. Uh, we definitely do need, the last few episodes for sure that we uh, needed a less uh, a more serious dugout to say the least. Uh, these guys always seem to be screwing around. Uh, obviously you want to have fun on the baseball field, but there's got to be some times that you can kind of walk in and get it done on the field. Uh, who do you have as a comparison to Justin Turner here? So my first one was a guy that we all talked about a ton this off season. And that's Jorge Soler. Um, a 1.8 war, 139 games played, 36 home runs, 75 RBI, a batting average of 250, and a slugging percentage of 512. So realistically, good stats. Um, we, I'm a big fan of Soler. It's too bad that we didn't get to get him. Um, but overall, I don't think Justin like I don't I think Justin Turner doesn't get as much love as he needs to. Um, as, as looking at the free agents that are possibilities, I think he was one of the better options and sort of sort of passed by a little bit. And when the Jays got him, I was pretty, pretty impressed. He's got really good career stats for his is great. Don't get me wrong. It would have been awesome to get him. Just the home run production in itself would be awesome. Be able to drive in a couple more runs. That would be huge for us. Well, just looking at uh, the comparison stats here from Justin Turner and Jorge Soler. Jorge Soler is really only beating him in the home run category, which is a big category. He's up 13. And then uh, OPS and OPS Plus, obviously, as well, which is, again, a big deal. But with Jorge Soler, they signed him. The Giants signed him to a three-year deal. I believe the Jays weren't really looking to take that risk on Jorge Soler because another thing with him is his career has been up and down. Yeah. Sometimes he'll hit 30 home runs a year, and sometimes he'll play 50 games and hit six. 
Yeah. With Justin Turner, he's been a career 280 hitter. I think I am actually more happy now with the Justin Turner signing than I would have been with a three year of three years yeah. of Jorge Hilaire. Yeah, you know what? And, and, looking, story. And, and looking back at all these guys, it, it does open your eyes to think, holy moly, like, you know, maybe maybe the Jays waited it out and made the right decision here, which then goes back to our Eduardo Escobar talks, thinking maybe they know something we don't, and they probably should know more than we do, right? So um, you never know. I, I do want to know who's your second guy. Uh, my second guy is a, probably one of the best hitters that was on the free agent market this season. And that is J.D. Martinez, obviously another guy that is near the end of his career, another guy that would be a great leader for this clubhouse. Uh, In comparison to Justin Turner, Justin Turner had a better war, uh, more hits, less home runs, less RBIs, better batting average, and a better on-base percentage. So this one is a little bit closer, but the difference in this one, I think, is the contract. You get Justin Turner on a $13 million deal. J.D. Martinez is wanting to command $20 million plus just to pretty much play D.H., that's a lot of money to play for a guy that's literally just going to hit the ball. Obviously, the Jays, that was one of the biggest things they did need was offense. So I wouldn't have minded if they had to overpay for J.D. Martinez a little bit. But, I mean, just looking at J.D. Martinez's stats, another guy that has been consistent, 33 career or 33 home runs last season, which would have been the best on the Jays by six. Uh, a guy that it is kind of tough that not to see the Jays have uh, in blue this season. But I don't think we can be upset with Justin Turner. Obviously, I think I would rather have had J.D. Martinez because, I mean, it's not our money. We say this all the time. Like, the contracts don't matter matter to us. So I think J.D. Martinez would have been a little bit more productive this season. But I do understand why the Blue Jays didn't go out and sign him. For sure. And uh, so my second guy is a guy we all know, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. A guy that I wanted to compare him to. I knew... He wasn't going to come back here, but a guy that I think has compar- very, very, very comparable stats from last season to Justin Turner. So Gurriel has one more home run. He has less RBIs at 82. He's got a batting average of 261. Justin Turner's batting average last year, 276. So a little bit better batting average for Justin Turner, but pretty comparable. And a slugging percentage that beats him by very, very slight. So looking back, Guriel had a, had a good year, but looking at Justin Turner's numbers, you're like, oh, okay. Maybe when we look at it in that context, it's very easy to make a decision here of you can get a guy on a one-year deal, way less money, and that, you know, I mean, it, it would have been tough either way if uh, Guriel even was open to being on the market. It wasn't probably going to go our way since, we, you know, we dealt him. But, uh, but just a good guy to look at in stats sort of uh, very, very similar stats, which is a little bit strange, not something I necessarily expected when going over the stats, but something I found sort of cool. Oh, it's just two completely different style players. Obviously, uh, Lourdes Gurriel is one of those more like fun-loving, like screw-around guys. Loves to have fun in the dugout and the clubhouse. Uh, Not a great fielder, so it kind of would have been the same as Justin Turner. Obviously, the ages are a lot different there, and Lourdes is like primarily an outfielder. But that would have been an interesting reunion. Lourdes used to be one of my favorite players on uh, that Blue Jays team. So I don't know if uh, my heart would have been able to handle him uh, walking out again. But I just think that we're trying to move past this uh, unseriousness as Jays fans and as a Jays organization. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they don't want these guys kind of screwing around. It's They're getting to a point where it's win now. And this team has underperformed for such a long time. It's tough to uh, be able to advocate for your players when they're screwing around the dugout and not producing in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, you know what? I'm, we're going to hit a quick pause here, but before we do that, Carter, I'm guessing that uh, we want to shout out our streaming service again. Uh, yes, we do. You guys obviously know about this. Uh, it's our for the first ever 24 seven locked on streaming channel. You guys can go over there to digest your sports content whenever you uh, figure you just, you want to do that. Um, 3 p.m., 3 a.m., whenever you feel like you want to Listen to our experts cover your favorite teams. Just go to YouTube and subscribe to our first ever Locked On 24-7 sports streaming channel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Today, I, uh, I took some NHL games. I got smoked again. Um, but I think my Canucks, uh, you know, sort of pulled through here and got me some money. So that was good. I think I ended up 
getting more than even actually on the day. So we're starting to build that up after those brutal Super Bowl losses. But uh, yeah, I definitely win for you. That's right. I will definitely be using FanDuel same game parlays as that's my go to. Um, just make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. So, Carter, as we continue, I will give you this one because I want to end with my guy here. So why don't you go ahead with your third pick? Okay, I got a guy that uh, the Jays were sort of in on, uh, a guy that was uh, one of the best third basemen out there, and it was uh, Jamer Candelario, uh, a guy that ended up signing with the Cubs, had 127 hits last season, 22 home runs, uh, 251 batting average, 39 doubles, 70 RBIs, and an OPS of 807. Uh, another guy that would have commanded a little bit more money than uh, Justin Turner here. Uh, it's This is a tough one. I was a little bit upset when uh, the Jays didn't sign him because this would have been uh, a lockdown third baseman that uh, is a better hitter than a lot of third basemen out there in the league. Obviously, the defense would have been a little bit of a fall down from Matt Chapman. But like, like I said, always uh, anyone is a step down from Matt Chapman. And at this point of the team, we say it all the time, defense doesn't really matter when you're not going to score any runs. So with this guy, it would have been nice to have him. But I think Justin Turner, again, you can't really complain. Um, obviously, if you're looking at it in like a future standpoint, it's one-year deal compared to a three, I believe it is, for uh, Candelario. So this one, it's higher risk for the Cubs and lower risk for the Jays, but it's pretty much the same player you're going to get offensively. Maybe Candelario is going to be a little bit more consistent. Uh, obviously, Justin Turner is getting up there in age, and we might see a little bit more of a fall off. But he has been consistent the last five years. I mean, he hit like 260 last year. Not a terrible year. Was it 280, actually? I might be confusing that number as well. Uh, I think it was around 280. But yeah, Justin Turner, a guy that is going to be consistent out of the box. And again, if you have to pick here, I think it's a very close argument for both of these players. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, of his, but uh, I, yeah, I think for the amount of money that he would have cost us, and really for the role that again we would have had a ton of infielders, right? So Justin Turner is sort of that guy that can slot in once in a blue moon to third base, but he's going to be our primary DH. I think this is a solid move uh, on the on the behalf of Justin Turner here. I I I know we were a little bit iffy on him but yeah like i keep saying looking back at all these stats and comparing them and doing these comparisons to these guys it it is very eye-opening i think to what we did get and why we maybe shouldn't be complaining no absolutely uh you can't complain with uh top two offensive production in pretty much every blue jays category last season if he would have been on the team uh this i think everyone's just pointing at this guy's age and they go a 39 year old 39 year old so many younger, maybe more uh, potential there with options. But I think with the Blue Jays, they've been looking for consistency for a long time. And yeah. I think this is the best chance they're going to get it with Justin Turner compared to a lot of these other guys. For sure. And and as my final one, I want to bring up Reese Hoskins. Now, the problem with Reese Hoskins is coming off injury. He missed out in the entirety of last season. Um, so I've got his 2022 stats now which is is different, right? It's not the most previous three years, so obviously things can change very quickly. Uh, he had a 2.3 war, 156 games played, 30 home runs, 49 RBIs, batting average of 246, and a slugging percentage of 462. Now, looking at this guy's stats, I mean, they're, they're pretty good, too. I mean, it's hard to complain with 30 home runs, right? Um, but in, in the same regard, it's, it's what we keep going over is, is – is it worth that much more? Is it really that big of a difference comparison to Justin Turner and what he could do? Maybe. Maybe Reese Hoskins would have been the right way to go here. But again, at the end of the day, I think that this was a very solid move by the Jays going for Justin Turner. I think it was a little bit surprising too. I don't know if it was necessarily what everybody was thinking, but I, I think it, at the end of the day, it was the right move. Yeah, with Reese Hawk, Hoskins, this one's tougher for me. I actually yeah. predicted him going to uh, the Blue Jays this offseason. And when I saw him sign with the Brewers, I was a little bit upset. Uh, it, it, just watching him in 2022 with the Phillies, he was unbelievable in the playoffs. Obviously, yeah. his hits for power uh, has that clutch gene that the Blue Jays so desperately need. Uh, Justin Turner, again, uh, more experience in the playoffs. And if you look long term, maybe Reese Hoskins would have been the better plan there. But at the end of the day, uh, Justin Turner is a great signing. 
Again, I think I would have had Reese Hoskins ho- over him, but then you're looking at the contract, the value, what the Jays are looking for in this instance right now. I don't think you can complain about this move whatsoever, and I understand exactly where they're coming from for signing Justin Turner. Yeah, at the end of the day, Reese Hoskins would have been a great signing. He would have, like, I probably would have preferred it, but with the Jays looking for that veteran presence that can, you know, maybe settle these guys down a little bit and get them focused on the game, I think it's a good move. I And, and comparing him, we compared him to six guys today, and maybe one, two of them would have been be- realistically better options. Yeah, and, I probably would have only taken Hoskins and Martinez over him, and even those ones are pretty debatable. Yeah, so at the end of the day, uh, this was sort of just a – we hope that you guys, you know, like Justin Turner. I think he's going to be a huge, huge fan favorite. Um, let me know what you guys think about Justin Turner as well. We, you know, we've, we've talked about him quite a bit, but it's it's interesting when new guys come in, coming are coming in and trying to make their mark. What what are their roles going to be? And he's a big guy that sounds like he's going to know what what his role is, and and he's just going to focus on just playing his role, which is big. Um, at the end of the day, we want to thank you guys so much for watching all our videos. Subscribe or follow us on Twitter, X, whatever. Braden Five Wasco Carter First Two. We'll be ready to go next week. I think I. You know what? We're just. I, I'm bubbling right now. I just can't wait for the season to get going. I want to watch some baseball. But the good thing is, Sportsnet 26 games they're going to be streaming for us in um, in the spring training here. So it's going to be electric, Carter. I'm pumped. Oh, it's so exciting seeing all these uh, videos of players being back. We're obviously going to be able to get more in depth about that next week. Uh, just before we go, uh, obviously spring training games aren't yet on. And while you guys are just looking for something to do before the season starts, you guys can go to our Locked On 24-7 streaming channel. Uh, whenever you guys want to just go to that channel and digest your sports content, just go to the Locked On 24-7 sports channel on YouTube and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, You guys all have a safe weekend and make sure to uh, like, subscribe and comment whether you agree or disagree with us in these comparisons. Have a good weekend.